Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. This is Real Estate Uncensored. My name is Greg McDaniel and I'm giving Matt the permanent day off. Nah, I'm just kidding. He's actually out doing some, some work with his book and I am taking the reins and I have got an amazing guest for you guys today. Mark Pattison, he is out of Southern California down in Matt's neck of the woods in San Diego. Uh, just a, an awesome guy. We're having some great conversations uh, in the in the you know pre-recording. He's been in the industry for about five years. He took his team from seven to eighteen agents in one year. Uh, switched over to the Cool Kids Club, aka EXP. Yo, knock it out with that one. Air pumps. <laughs> uh, the but, new norm. Uh, the new norm, man. Working from home, no 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 physical contact. You know, social distancing. But you know, with our brokerage and with these kind of interviews, you can do it. and It's not a problem, right? Uh, but Mark, break in, man. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me your pedigree, where you're from, what your favorite color is. Do you like long, long walks on the beach and sunset? I mean, what's your story, brother? Yeah, so I was uh, born and raised in Pacific Northwest. Worked for Microsoft right out of college. A uh, little bit real estate related there and then moved to Chicago for work. And uh, after being in two cities with really bad weather, uh, I said, I'm done with shitty places and shitty weather. I'm going to move to Southern <laughs> California and become a real estate agent. And so I told my older brother, I was like, I'm going to go get my real estate license and move to L.A. or San Diego. And he was like, good luck. You'll never make it. And I think that's why I turned to be successful is because my older brother told me I couldn't do it. Why would he, well, He's <laughs> so a I, hater. Jeez. I know. I, I, I sometimes will send him check uh, pictures of uh, my checks. <laughs> he's like, fuck, I was so wrong about this kid. Maybe I should I join him. Like, nah. Yeah, no, you're not allowed. No, so yeah, whenever I'm, I'm kind of a stubborn individual. If I'm told I can't do something, I really put my head down and and just truck along and do it. So I've been in real estate for this is my fifth year. Nice. Um, and nice. Started out as an agent on a team and kind of just grew and then built my own team. So it was funny you and I were talking off air that like you know both of us have a passion for buyers and a lot of people poo poo buyers say oh buyers are liars uh, you need you know listings are life you got to list homes to you know to be successful and you and I vehemently disagree with that and I'd love to get your point of view on why why do you think that's complete bullshit when it comes to listings equals life in in this business yeah so one of the things I always heard at conferences was you got to list to last mm -hmm. and so I kept getting on myself about it. And, you know, if you're great with listings, good with you. You know, I think that as we know with the DIS personality test, people are different all walks. You know, you're going to be people that love listings and hate buyers. I love buyers and I hate listings. There's people yeah. on my team that love listings. Um, but I, I find it that the better agents are the ones going after the listings. So I always thought, why do I want to compete with the better agents to go after listings and have these people where I can go after the buyers that are going with uh, you know, a newer agent and I can go and really go with a great presentation to these buyers, show them how to get their offer accepted, walk them through the whole process and, and have this client that just absolutely loves me. Yeah. Uh, and then there's really little competition when you're working with buyers. It's so true. I've, I've actually worked with a lot of, over the years, you know, about 20 years in the business, when people would be like, oh my God, <clears throat> I hate having to go drive buyers around. I'm like, Dude, that's like Christmas and Easter all wrapped into one is you go hunt down like what these people are looking for and you can put this whole, you know, scenario together and you get to watch the light in their eyes light up when they find the right house. Because as you know, we don't pick houses, houses pick us. And when that light turns on in their eyes, uh, it, it's, it's a transformational thing. And so I want you to walk me through and explain to the audience um, w when it comes to the buyers, how are you maintaining a good, strong buyer business when everyone else yet says like you have, you have to do listings? So one, where are you getting your buyers? Two, what kind of training are you putting your team through? Because you said you went from seven agents last year to 18 agents on your team right now. You have a, at the end of April of this of 2020, you're going to have closed 104 deals. Damn, player. So let's walk through that. <laughs> let's, let's hope they close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fingers and toes crossed. COVID-19, COVID we hope we uh, nothing cancels. But yeah, so I think that it's a, there's a lot in there. It's one, one thing that I do is with my team, training them. You know, I, I don't know if you sound like a broken record when you just keep repeating yourself over and over to people. Well, mm -hmm. why don't you just record, anytime someone asks you a question, record that answer. So state the question, record it, upload it into a library, and title it so that it's searchable, so that people on your team, if they have that same question, they can just go and do it. Today, I had right. two people come on my team, and instead of going through, my CRM is a little confusing. I use two different CRMs, and they, they integrate together. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way is just to me to do a quick video. So this morning at 6 a.m. or so, 
I recorded a video explaining the CRM to these two and I saved it. And so then the next time someone says, well, how does this work? I just send them that video. Well, we would have it in a, in a database. So I have like an online training portal that I've used uh, for any anyone new. I have a Facebook group. Some people will use Workplace. We used, uh, we've just had it in a Facebook group before Workplace even came about. Mm -hmm. So all my videos and training are uploaded into there. So anything that you need to do, you just search in the search bar and you press play and it goes to a YouTube video or to just a Facebook video of me talking, explaining everything. So what you're saying is that you, I think what you're doing is you're you're not reinventing the wheel. A lot of agents yeah. will sit down and have the same conversation over and over and over with their with their team members or downlines or, you know, clients or whatever else. But you're systematizing this, and I think I think what what this is such a huge takeaway is, you know, if someone says, well, Josh, you know, Mark, what's it like to live in, you know, this part of town? Great, boom, camera, mic. This is what it's like to live in X, Y, and Z part of town or new member comes on. So what do I do my first day? Go to YouTube. Here's a video. Watch the whole playlist. Come back to me with questions, right? Oh, yeah. I've got day one. Like I'll, I'll have a day one homework sheet. And then it says, go to this video. And then it has like little check boxes and they just go through everything. So if someone starts out, there's honestly no questions to me for like the first two weeks. Really? Yeah. It's, what do you have to ask me about? It's already documented. <laughs> like, if it's not there, like... <laughs> What are you know asking what me for? <laughs> yeah. Like guys, well, because here's the thing right is you there. spend so much time and energy on that person and then they freaking don't even make it as an agent. A lot of yeah. my agents, so for example, a lot of the people that I go after or not go after, but a lot of people that come to me are people who can't make it in real estate. And I'm not going to take someone who's been in the business for 30 years and they can't make it. I'm going to take someone who's been in the business for six months, maybe at another larger brokerage, and they're just not getting the attention and the handholding or the training mm -hmm. they need. Uh, and I take those people. So a lot of these people don't even know how to write a contract. Really? So I, I take them through everything before they, yeah. So I, I just had a new kid come from a, a brokerage. I won't state what brokerage it was. He was there for six months. He came to my team and week one, he got a lead from my team and he ended up writing an offer. And he was like, well, where do I go to, to uh, start the offers? And I'm like, uh, they didn't teach you any of that. So I was like, well, go to week two in our training and, and start following through that and go through and write me a practice offer every single day for the next week. So I got him on board, but I thought just assuming he came from another brokerage, he would have already been trained on how to write an offer, but apparently not. No, man, there's so little, the, the, the level, the threshold of, you know, training and, you know, environment is so low in our industry. I mean, my former brokerage, uh, they had a gal training there before I was the head trainer and she had a big old three ring, you know, notebook that would had black and white photocopies literally from the 19, like in early nineties and eighties. Um, and that's what she was training on. I came in and I revamped it and did videos and the whole thing. And people walked away going, Oh my gosh, I, I actually get it. And I said, and like you're in your mind, it's like, gosh, why can't people train our other agents in this business to be good? And I think it comes down to greed and fear because they're fearful uh, of them, you know, surpassing them and they're greedy about the money they're making. But I mean, there's so much money to be made in this industry. It's not like, like uh, we're we're gonna cut our own throats if we teach you know Mark or Phil or Sue or you know Becky to go do business. It's just we all work together in harmony. I, and for sure. I mean, so when it comes to the buyers, let's talk about lead sources. Uh, where where are you guys getting a lot of lead sources right now, and where would you like to grow into to receive more lead sources from? So my main focus is find your niche. That would be my advice to anyone. If you're really good with something, police officers, firemen, military, something where they want to refer you and there's a very close knit community, I would say uh, that's going to be your, your best lead source. So mm -hmm. for us personally, it's military. So we work with a lot of military buyers and we'll focus our ads and our ad spend towards that. Another one is realtor.com. Um, some people don't really like that lead source. We found great use with it. It's very important when you do realtor.com is that you look in the zip code that you're purchasing and it's not too high of a price point and it's not too uh, low of a price point. If you have an online lead for Zillow or realtor and it's a high price point, you know, in your market, 1.5 is high. That $1.5 million buyer more than likely is going to have friends or family that are real estate agents and they don't want to bother them. So they're just shopping online. It's a lot harder to convince someone to not use their family member or friend if they have an agent versus like a $500,000 price point. Mind mm -hmm. you, our price point is lower than our average in San Diego. Our price point last year was 520, but we did 224 deals. So, dude, respect. And our all right. And our average uh, buyer that we showed homes to. 
So I, I think that we did like 94% were buyers, maybe 93% were buyers. It's a wow. lot of buyers. And the average buyer we showed homes to was uh, five or less. Five or less homes you showed each buyer to. So you could bake, literally what you're saying is that you can, in one weekend, put people into contracts. You know, Definitely. You can from the time you meet them, so you call them on, you get a lead on Wednesday, we would have them in contract on the weekend. So break that down for me. How are you so efficient when it comes to putting buyers into properties? A lot of people say, uh, there's nothing to show my clients or we're getting beat out. Or I mean, how do you get over those objections? So one, if you have that mindset, if, if you're always going to get beat out, you always will get beat out. Mm -hmm. If you have the mindset that there's nothing to show your buyer, there's nothing to show your buyer. So right. for example, I bought my house here, wasn't even looking at a house. I walked into an open house, not even for a buyer. I have no idea why I walked into this home. <laughs> I didn't look at any other houses and I bought it. <laughs> so how many houses does your client need? They need one. One house. You don't have to. And if you're showing them 20, you're not asking them the right questions because there's not 20 houses to show them. I honestly think that if you actually ask the questions that are important to a buyer, there's probably only four or five houses that match their criteria. And if there's more that, that match your criteria, then shit, you really better get them an offer accepted that weekend. Yeah, you better. I do. Okay, so you opened a Pandora's box on this. So you, you said the right question. So let's jump in. What are the questions you're asking your buyer to get these conversion rates? Because I'm fascinated with this right now. I know the audience is listening to this, taking you know notes aggressively on their. They're probably starting <laughs> small fires. No. <laughs> they're, they're starting small fires on their notepads. Their hands are moving so quickly. So what? Okay, I'm the buyer. Let's role play this yep. thing. You're you're the agent. Obviously, I'm the buyer. If we're at a house or whatever the scenario is, you set the scenario and let's go through these questions. So it's not anything specific that I'm asking them. It's about asking open-ended questions. So I would say, so you're looking for a three bed, two bath. Now the three bedrooms, tell me more about that. What are you gonna be using those bedrooms for? Uh, well, obviously my wife and I are gonna be in one naturally. Uh, and then my daughter and son are gonna probably bunk up and I'm gonna try to use the thirdism as, a, as an office. Okay, so you work from home? Yeah, yeah, I work from home. I, I'm a home-based business, yeah. Okay, perfect. So this right here, the reason I ask why, tell me why about it, is that some people will say they want a three-bedroom and their budget is 400. Mm -hmm. And in reality, they can more than likely afford a two-bedroom so much better and they didn't need that third bedroom. So we go in and we just ask why, 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 why on every single question we ask. So I have a buyer intake form. I don't know if you can share it with the, with the group or somehow, but any buyer intake form that you Google is going to have all the questions that you have. But instead of just having them say, you know, we go through LP Mama, which is location, price, motivation, uh, appointment, or agent, money, appointment. So mm -hmm. it's an acronym that stands for us. We just go through all those, but every single one we go over, we ask them more, like more detail. Understanding loans and understanding credit score and things like, so right now the credit score for VA has gone up to 660 is really the base of what you're going to get a loan for. It used to be you could have like a 580. But what if I was going out showing a buyer that's a credit score of 600 right now, mm. and then we go to write an offer, you can't even get them into get escrow. So knowing all your facts and just having it. So it's more than a script. It's just like, it's a whole knowledge base. It's, it's knowing everything. And really like, we'll show a client a house, but once, and then if they're not pre-approved, we're not going to show that buyer again. Absolutely not. Like, what's the point? And if they're not going to get pre-approved, then they're not serious. No, they waste your time. And, 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 and we only show someone pre-approved versus pre-qualified. We won't show someone who's pre-qualified. Well, it breaks the same thing your agents because there's a big distinction between those two, right? Well, the only way I remember is pre-approval starts with an A, so, so it's better <laughs> than, than pre-qualified. So pre-approval, uh, it's going to be as if my lender will pre-approve someone and my clients will say, man, that, that lender is asking me so many questions. And you say, would a hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, would you rather have them ask you the questions now so that they can really tell you what your payment will be versus asking you questions once you got your offer accepted, if we even get it accepted, because some Joe Schmo bank just gave us a pre-qualification letter that's not even real. Yeah. So we just make sure everyone's pre-approved and not only pre-qualified. Yeah, that's a such a good point to make that, you know, we everyone has their own little differences and takes on this stuff. You know, what I've always said to folks is, you know, they're the same question. Well, I you know, pre qualification same as pre approval, and I explained to them like like you did. No, that's not how it goes. But then I also will say, well, the reason why I want you to get pre approved before we go out there because the biggest disservice I could ever do to you was to show you a home that might be just a smidgen outside of your comfort zone on pricing and monthly payments. And if I show you that, I would have done the biggest misservice to you. And that's why I want to make sure that we're looking at the properties that are in your comfort zone on pricing and, like I said, the monthly payments. You understand where I'm coming from now, right? 
And every time they're like, yeah, 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 I totally get it. And then they go get pre-approved and everything is rosy and wonderful and there's unicorns and, you know, sherbet and the whole nine yards. But, okay, so we're, 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 work, we're walking through our, our questionnaire and, and people need to, like you said, just ask open-ended questions. That's what your yep. biggest, that's your biggest thing. Like, why? Help me understand. What does this mean for you? What would it, you know, what would it you know, do for your life if you were able to get this home? Those kinds of things, right? And when you ask the question, take notes and repeat mm -hmm. back so it shows you're listening. And if you're talking more than the client, and if you're used to talking more than a client, put cotton in your pocket to remind yourself to like take the cotton out of your ears or, and put it in your mouth. Um, so I have one agent that just like blah, 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 blah. I'm like, shut up. Stop talking so much. So she puts cotton in her pocket. She's a newer agent. Now it reminds her to just like stop talking and then put that in your mouth so you just be quiet. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is that silence is your biggest negotiator. If you can ask an open ended question and just, like you said, shut up. And it, it might get me uncomfortable for the first couple of seconds, but I will guarantee you on my last dollar in my bank account that your buyers will talk before you and they will keep giving themselves answers as long as you keep remain silent. Obviously not a, in a creepy amount of time, but for a, 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 the correct amount of time of silence. So And they'll like you more. Yeah, because they get to be the hero of the story, right? Yeah, they're talking. People love to talk, so they're going to like you more. Hey, man, I do a podcast. Of course I like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I have to remind myself to stop talking. So, Dude, so it, during the, our whole COVID-19 you know, fiasco right now, my girlfriend, we sold her house, and now she like pseudo living with me for a little bit, and she comes into my like, – because my, uh, my dining room is my office, and my whole house, you can pretty much hear me, right, because I got a big voice. Um, and my girlfriend just goes into the bedroom I'm like, Hey babe, what's up? She's like, you never stop talking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I know, <laughs> I know, baby. I know. <laughs> my, uh, mine is my kitchen table right now. This is my okay. office <laughs> or I guess my dining room table. Yeah. 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 That works. Chilling out on my dining room table. It's, uh, been my office for about two weeks now. Welcome to working from home on a consistent basis, right? Yes. Uh, so, so you walk me through why you made a decision to grow from seven to eighteen. Now, was that with EXP or, or you know downline, or is that just straight up like boots on ground? Your team uh, that you interact with on a daily basis, and why did you decide to grow it like that? No, so I actually it's nothing to do EXP route. It's more just the fact that I I really uh, have been able to take what I've I've learned in the the two years I've had my team, or two and a half years I've had my team. And I can duplicate it now. So I now have a San Diego team, which is where I'm from, like my area. Mm -hmm. And then I have a North team. So San Diego County is about an hour drive North. So I have okay. a team up there of three agents. And then I have a team in Riverside of three agents. Okay. So because I can take what I've done down here and duplicate it. Um, once you understand leads and lead sources, it's really easy to just take an agent and plug them in. It really is. So, it, and it really to is. give you an idea too, I have, uh, 18 agents on my team. That's not downline. That's just on my team. And I have no admin. Huh? So <laughs> I, I'm a lean, mean, just like, yeah, oh. we, we really have, I have, a, I have a transaction coordinator um, okay. that runs the transactions. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. I won't let them do the TC work, but we have a transaction coordinator and that is paid for. Um, we negotiate that in our contracts a lot of times. So it's paid for by the buyer. And then that's paid towards my company. And then my company pays a uh, 1099 to that, to that uh, transaction coordinator. But she's not someone who's like putting lock boxes on places or filling flyers or ordering signs or inputting listings. She's, she's truly just TCing the, the contract. So it's all my systems that I've had in place that have really helped that my agents are really streamlined. Like we have a very exact process of when a buyer gets put into escrow, what happens next? That, see, what I keep hearing consistently out of your mouth, Mark, and the, what I really like is that it's systems, systems, systems. You're not working harder. Mm -hmm. You're working smarter, and you're scaling on top of what you've learned in the past so that you can continually propel yourself vertically, not spinning the spinning the wheel and not getting out of that mud pit, right? I mean, a lot of agents yeah. just do this all damn day, and they're like, yeah, man, I'm having a great year. You're like, I've made a million dollars. Okay, well, what was your cost on everything? 900,000. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it sounds like you're not, you're not operating it that way at all. Um, when it comes to the scaling side and kind of, when did you realize that like, holy crap, like I got something here. Like I, I can actually build this. 
and people were going to follow me. Was that something you planned on doing or is that just something that kind of came into your reality? I kept finding out, like, I love when people are like, oh, you've got so-and-so, she's a rock star, he's a rock star. And I'm like, you know, I've got five of those, right? Well, now I have seven <laughs> of them. <laughs> and I've looked at it and I'm like, holy crap, I, not, I didn't create, like these agents are, they're, they're on their own, just amazing. But I think I've kind of like shown them the light. I'm like, I always say like Dory, have you ever felt like you're like drowning or like Dory's like, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> as long as you're pointing the right direction for the agents, like they can swim and they can go the right way. These brokerages that take these agents on, just throw them into the freaking like into a pond with alligators. And they're like, good luck. It's true, mine. It's like, man. Hey, you're going to swim through some sharks, but go that way and promise me just keep swimming and keep going. So like, if I check in, I have like a hundred point day check-in sheet for a lot of my new agents and everything I do is optional. But it's an option to be on my team as well. So if you're not putting in effort, see you later. Uh, I so <laughs> love that. It's, I, I, you, I have 100 point options, and uh, it's also the option to be on my team. So if you don't like it, get the fuck out. Exactly. And, well, that's how you have to be. Is like I have a new kid on my team that switched from a brokerage. The one I was saying didn't know how to write an offer, and he hasn't right. been submitting his little sheet. And I'm like, dude, this is why you aren't successful. Like you're just not even doing the basics. And, so, so go ahead. Oh, I was saying, so this 100-point day, it gamifies your day. So I don't have to sit there and babysit someone. I, it says, like, call 100 people. So you have to check off, and you, and you get a point for each person you call. Touch base with a past client. Touch a nurture. Touch a uh, SOI. Like, you're supposed to do all these different things every day. And at the end of the day, take a picture of your sheet and send it to me. And uh, to be honest, it has slowed down with my team a little bit um, because of coronavirus. We've been – I think it's a little bit different adjusting. Like, we do work from home a lot. But we do it, even though we're at eXp, we have our own office and there's a lot of prospecting culture in there. And I think that agents on their own are lazy. So I got to get yes. back on them about that. But that's something I don't have to have someone babysitting them. They just text me a picture of their 100 point day at the end of their day. And it shows that they've done the leading indicators. So people will say, oh, I want to sell more houses. It's like, well, did you call more people? Because that's all you have to do. It's just math. So if you want more escrows, you got to call more people. It, it, it's so simple, isn't it? It's, it's so very simple. simple, but yet it's so hard at the exact same time because a lot of us, and this goes for me and you and every other human on, on, on earth, we get scared at different points in our life and we're, or we're afraid of the rejection or what to say, or I don't have the right rebuttal or, you know, fuck, what if they actually do go want to go look at something? What do I do with something that, that, you know, you're like the dog that chased the car to the now caught the car. What do I do with the car syndrome? Yep. Um, yeah. And it, it's one of those things that like when you're doing prospecting and you're doing these sh these calls and I mean I use uh, I use Red X for my dialing program uh, so I 100 calls a day I mean that's like that's like amateur hour I mean if you can't do at least 100 calls a day using a triple line dialer I mean that will take you less than an hour to do that kind of that kind of volume yeah it's just the compounding effect I think is kind of might be where you're going with that is that if you're persistent and consistent uh, your business will thrive because you don't stop. You're like, Dory, you just keep going, right? Keep swimming. <laughs> yeah. Keep swimming, man. That's all you got to do. Now, when you're out there doing the calls, um, you know, when I, there's two different questions here. You know, I know with the, when I do my calls, I find a lot of properties that are, that are not on the market. So do you guys find the same thing when you're doing your calls and you can kind of create your own little micro MLS that you can then feed your buyers to directly? Uh, yeah. Do, do you guys find that? So what I would say is like, you know, having that one of our gold bricks is if you're working with buyers and gold brick is like a phrase or a saying that you use that they're not going to be able to have. So one of ours, our main one is, so is your agent that you're working with only showing you properties on the MLS or are they also <laughs> showing you off market properties? And people are like, I love when agents say, oh, I don't have any off market properties. It's like, oh, and you don't have any cash buyers either. Because if you give me a house that's freaking worth 400,000 and you give it to me for 300, I'll be your cash buyer. Maybe not now. I just bought this house. I don't have that cash. <laughs> like, I'll find later. you a cash buyer. <laughs> Down the road, I'll do that. <laughs> In a couple of months, I'll be, I'll be, my reserves will be built back up. Right now, I'm broke. <laughs> uh, but no, they're like, you always, and, and off market, guys, Fizbo's off market. Uh, yes. Expireds are off market. If you know any flippers in the area, get their list of inventory every single week sent to you. What's under construction, what they just acquired, what's going to be going on the market soon. These flippers want you to have their inventory and that's your off market inventory. So I love that flipper that, tip. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Using that and building those relationships, mind you, the buyer that you're talking to more than likely is never going to buy 
in off market property, but it's going to get you that meeting. It's going to get you that appointment. Whereas you would have never had that appointment because they can just go on Redfin or Zillow or Trulia or whatever website they want to search on. And they don't need you. They only need you to open the door. And even then there's web there, there's companies that open doors for you, right? It's open door. Yeah, I think as well. Open door. So yeah, imagine that you don't even need us. <laughs> so you got to have something that those companies don't have and off market inventory is truly the best thing you could say. It, it is, you know, I, when I got in the business a number of years ago and I was at an open house with my father and uh, I remember this so clearly, I can actually drive you to the house where we were and we're doing a Sunday open house and my dad's talking to these, uh, to these uh, folks that are you know coming through and my dad, if you guys don't know him, he's Terry McDaniel, been in the business for 48 years. I mean, literally, literally been almost 50 years in the business. And he's like, you know what? Well, it's great talking with you. You know, we got a couple properties that are coming up on the market uh, that haven't hit yet. Would you like us to keep you informed about that? And you, the people's eyes totally changed. They're like, yeah, that'd be great. And I remember when I, when they left, I turned to him like, Dad, what the fuck, dude? We don't have any new properties coming on the market right now. <laughs> and he's like, he looked at me so sternly in the face, and he goes, goes, Greg, we always have more properties coming on. And I'm like, oh, I get it. Yeah. You know. But, and with FISBOs and expireds, though, you really do have more inventory. It's like those people still want to sell. So of course they do. And yeah. Uh, have you ever, okay, here's a here, here's something I want to run past you real quick. Uh, on uh, Red X, they have a thing called for rent by owners. Do you do you guys tap into that at all or not? No. Dude. All right. Super solid on this one. I'll uh, we'll chat afterwards and I'll connect you. But dude, the for rent by owners is an absolute gold mine because you can call these people and say, hey, are you thinking? Of, have you have you rented your house at one two three Main Street? Doesn't matter if they say yes or no. Your answer is, you know what? That's exactly why I'm calling. And then you can say, hey, well, you know, is the reason why you have you haven't I'm used writing this down? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now now my hands burning. I gotta write. This. <laughs> And so you, you tell them, you know, hey, can I, you know, is there a reason why you haven't employed the use of a professional real estate agent like myself to help you get this property listed or rented? And then they ask you how much it's worth and everything else. Now you make like 500 bucks on a, on a rental, right? But you're there building the relationship with that homeowner who obviously likes real estate because this is not their primary home. This is a secondary home. We don't know how many homes they have, right? So you can yeah. turn them, now they, if they say, yes, it is rented, you can say, hey, you know what? I work with active investors that love to buy properties with investor with renters in them. Would you consider selling if I could bring you a full market value sale, right? Or full market value offer. And you continue to build the relationship with them. And then your third question to them is, you know what, Mark, you know, would you be interested in, um, you know, adding more inventory to your to your investment list? I come across, you know, properties all the time aren't on the market uh, that might be good for you. What are you looking for? You have three killer questions cool. you can work with those people. It's and they're always going to be. They have to be yes of one of them, yeah, unless they're yeah, an agent themselves. Yeah, exactly. And worst case scenario, man. Worst case scenario, they don't want anything to do with any of it. They, they, they got it rented. They aren't thinking about selling it. They aren't going to buy any more. Great, dude. What's your best email? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep you up to date in case anything changes in your mind about what what's going on in the marketplace. And nine times out of 10, people are going to give you their information or they're going to either, you know, do some sort of working with you or they'll know a buddy of theirs that's looking for something. And it's just awesome. Dude, you got you to gotta try this stuff out. You'll love this stuff. Yeah. I thought, it was, I thought it was crazy the first time I did it, but fucking awesome. Um, See, this is why I share. When you share on podcast, then you get something back. And you gave that's me exactly flippers. <laughs> yeah. You give me so. flippers. I, I give you for rent by owners. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, in it's the funny thing is, is like when they're doing these calls, I actually had a client of mine, not a client of mine. I had another agent. He hit me up. He's like, Hey Greg, I know you do a lot of calls. Do you have any land? I got a investor. And I'm like, yeah, bro. I knocked out four different projects. He loves all of them. We showed him to his investor. His investor's writing on two of them. He wants to buy the other two down the road after this whole market debacle, you know, subsides. But it's that whole shadow market that you develop for your buyers and your buyer's agents when you do the prospecting, right? Yeah. If you're not making calls, you're there's no way you're going to be successful. You know, it, let me ask you a question. Are what are you guys doing? Now I know this answer because you already told me this, but I want to ask it anyways. What are you guys doing on YouTube right now? Not much. Not much. <laughs> we need to do. We need to do a lot more. 
you know what? I think what you guys, you, you already, you're so successful and you got such a good vibe about you, man. No wonder people are attracted to you and they want to work on your team. I got into video a number of years ago and, I, and the reason why I do it is because I started, I started doing calls and doors. Well, videos are like, they're, they're living business cards with content, right? Uh, you got to look up my boy, Jackson. Uh, he's with YouTube agent. He's on, he's on YouTube, go to YouTube agent and check him out. Dude, he and his team getting two to 10 phone calls inbound uh, a day from buyers that want to work with his team based upon what the content he's putting out there. Yeah. And well, if you think about it, if you're like, how do I unclog my sink? You go to YouTube. How do I do this? Like everything is on YouTube. How do I buy a house? People don't want to read about it anymore. They want to watch. So you got to have watch. your content in the video and we have it. I just am such a damn perfectionist. I mm -hmm. wish I weren't such a perfectionist because I, I guess, uh, what is it? What's the saying about, um, you know, done and is better than your, per my done is better than your, uh, like perfect or you're like, you're wait you know, it's, it's basically saying like, you can sit there and just per like perfect it over and over again. But my yep. like half-assed version is always going to beat your perfected version. That's never put out. Just get it the, out there and let people I start know. getting into your ecosystem. I here's my prediction, Mark. I, this is what I th feel for you. I think that you're you just my little bit of knowing you. I think you're I think you're the type of guy that will take action after this conversation. And I think that you and your team are going to see an explosive growth um, because you already have the systems. You already are, are are working with the buyers, and then you know with your YouTube and you know video content. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, you're going to go through the roof with 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 deals and recruitment, right? Yeah. It no, just exactly. never I've stops. never actively I've never actively recruited, so that's something that I you know as you're building your team, I think it's it's nice to grow organically. I think if you force anything, it's gonna, not going to be the right fit. So I've just always had referrals, or when you're giving back like this and and helping out, people naturally want to join your team, or people naturally want to buy buy homes from you. Today, I mean, just today alone, I've had. I think probably six or seven past clients check in on me. How's everything going? Mind you, during this whole, if you're not checking in with your past clients right now, you need to be dropping text messages, calls, you know, emails, video emails, and making them really personal to them. Don't do a mass text to all your past clients, but just checking in to see how they're doing. Nothing real estate related. But now, like it's been going for two weeks in San Diego where we're kind of on lockdown mm -hmm. and I'm getting these people are checking in with me. Like, on the right, I mean, this happens naturally, anyways, but just on the regular now because of coronavirus. So, um, it's so important to be checking in, and and with YouTube and all these different things, it just makes you that. It's like a whole package that I need to I need to seal the deal. It it, it is, and you know, you know what I think what you just mentioned right there is so valuable for people to take away, and you know, you're saying to the fact because you brought so much value and you're, you're, you're at such a level of professionalism and follow through and all your systems that your, your clients, you know, they could call anybody they want in the world, but they're making a conscious decision. Like, dude, how's Mark? How, how's the team? Like, dude, tell me what's going on in life. Like, you know, are, are you going bonkers being stuck at home? You know, have, have you Netflix and chilled to the point where you have, you know, blisters on your butt? I mean, how's life? And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, my client actually texted me a picture of uh, UPS slips on my office this morning. She's like, I'm on my morning walk. I walk by your office and you have UPS slips on your window. Like, see, that's the, see what you guys got going on, man. You have something that like people would cut their left thumb off for. You have people proactively reaching out to you and wanting your best for you. Most people just let their clients, especially buyers, just fall by the wayside. And they just completely forget about them. Oh yeah, I've sold those people. I've never listed their house because I won't let them sell their homes. But they've purchased two <laughs> homes for me. I've I, I wouldn't let them sell their first house. Uh, I met them on Zillow. I officiated yeah. their wedding. What? Yeah. Oh, and I officiated. So I was at a brokerage previously. I just officiated the other number one team at the brokerage. I officiated their wedding two days ago, uh, six feet away. Coronavirus. Everyone <laughs> did. They did a drive-in video or drive-in wedding. So you drove in, sat in your cars. And my friends, they were my competitors, but that's yeah. why we get our offers accepted. We're talking about working with buyers and stuff is like, they were the number one listing team at the brokerage. We represented a lot of the buyers. We would just call them for their inventory. <laughs> we would bring them the buyers. So those relationships matter, guys. Like the number one competition at my brokerage, we were best friends with. I officiated their wedding. Do not be bastards to your competition. Be friends with everyone and you'll get your offers accepted. 
You know what? That that is such a good point of view right there. When I first got in the business, I was like a like a dog in a shelter, you know, around my food bowl. I was just like, get away from me! Like this is my people. And then I learned like, hey man, just like open up and be like, go ahead and go meet all of the different agents in your in your brokerages and in your community. Yeah, some of them are gonna be douchebags. Okay. Yeah. If you're a douchebag, you own your douchebaggery. The rest of you guys are hu great human beings. And, you know, it, it, when you make the friends, you, you, what you said is so accurate. For all you guys, new agents, when, you, what you heard Mark say was this. Don't bastardize, you know, your, your coworkers and your competition because you know what? You're going to need that SOB someday when you submit a buyer's contract and they say, you know what? I know Mark. He's a solid dude. His team crushes. You know what? They might be a little bit, you know, less than the other offers, but I know he closes and that's, you know, we'll, we'll, let's do the deal with him and his team. That's more valuable. Yeah. Way more valuable. It's so crazy. It's like, uh, and one trick that we found, a little tip is my agents will search the listing agent's name on Facebook mm -hmm. and see friends in common. Oh, so adding cool. all your friends that you've done deals with, all the agents, so that when that happens again, you'll say, hey, Amanda, uh, I know this guy, John, I just wrote an offer on his property. It looks like you work in the same office as him. Can you call him and tell him that I'm a good agent? <laughs> We do that all the time. And it we works, just did it? a deal. Yeah, we just did a deal with the other agent, so they know we're a good agent. Because you know, Amber, whoever your our fictitious human being is, you know, yeah, you know, she went to bat because hey, bro, I know these fools. They're solid. Like, they're gonna get your deal closed. It, I, that stuff is. It, it, see, these are the things that people don't talk about, right? They just don't know to think about it like this. That's why people think that buyers are liars and, you know, the yeah, listings are life or whatever it's the like, sayings are. You can't get your offer accepted because you're a dick. No. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. No listing agents want to work with you. No. There, Whereas there I'm are... like, I try to be so nice to everyone. One, I actually like to be nice. But two, it's like it really does benefit you if people like you. It, 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 yes. And it's just being a good human. You know, yeah. that's, that, don't backstab. Don't talk shit. You know, treat and everyone the freaking house. You're not doing. You're not doing heart surgery. We're not that important. <laughs> We're not that important. A fucking monkey can do our job. All right. Yes. Yeah. I so mean, take. Be nice. It's not that stressful. It's only stressful if you make it. And you just gotta. It's all about future pacing. Being friendly. Like, there's nothing worse than having to write an offer on some agent's property where you're just like, oh, I don't really like this guy, but ah, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. There's one agent I will not write offers for on their properties. Flat see, out. Why would you want to be that agent? Like I, that agent has to know, like you are doing a disservice to your sellers, not you, uh, but the other person. Like if you're that bad, I, like, yeah, yeah, it's everybody knows this person. And everybody has the same opinion about this human being. So I'm like, whenever I see this person's, you know, listings, I'm like, nah, no, yep. I know I'll tell that the story. Feeling. I'll be like, dude, this person like nearly killed you know, a deal and nearly got these a couple like divorced, if not separated because of the, you know, how stressful it was. Dude, and, and you I'm... have no idea how karma is. Like <sighs> I had one situation thing came back around four years later. I had a lady who was my landlord and I ended up meeting people like in Chicago that were her number one lead source. And I was like, wait, you know that lady? I was like, I have texts from her when I was her tenant when I first moved to San Diego. Look what she used to write me. So I showed them my text to the to her lead source. They cut yeah. her out of the system. Seriously? Yes. So oh. will get you in the ass. So do not, don't be mean to people. Be nice I, always. I love that. You're like, oh man, that chick fucking sucks. Check this out. Yeah. She <laughs> she was awful. I I didn't know electrical panels were outside of homes. I'm from Washington in Chicago where it freaking rained and snowed. You don't put the electrical <laughs> panel on the outside. And my power was off. I called her and she's like, check your fucking lease. I was like, well, sorry. <laughs> karma uh, got her though ah uh, man i this human that i'm talking about i really hope karma karma takes a giant bite out of their butt um, there you go okay so, so we moral of the story be very polite to people always be nice don't be a dick. and volunteer don't be mad okay don't be matt johnson <laughs> and of course he's not here so i can totally rip him a new one uh there but he laughed his ass off about it anyways um okay so we got to wrap this thing up um, Mark, I want to, what are some of your takeaways? Whatever, if you, if you were, if you were talking to your five years ago self, right? What's something that you would tell your five-year-old, five year, five year in the past self getting into the team, the business and, you know, opting to work with buyers, you know, what would you tell yourself? I would say find your niche market. So understand that if you can service one type of group, you can do very, very well. 
uh, from mine, like I said, military and buyers, that's our niche. Uh, and, you know, don't necessarily think that whatever anyone else is saying, if I'm saying something that doesn't work for you, it probably doesn't work for you. Mm. Uh, I know that when I first started out, I, I was trying to call FISBOs and expireds and all that good stuff. And it just wasn't my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So do what works for you. And if, you know, you, if you just focus on one thing and do it really well, um, you can be successful. I love it. I love it. Don't be a hoe of real estate, you know? Yeah. You don't there. have to bounce around. No, you don't. And that's something that nobody really thinks about because, I mean, if I'm here in the Bay and I, I'm working in Walnut Creek and then I have a client goes, I want to go buy in Daly City or Pacifica or San Francisco or, you know, San Jose. I, I don't know those markets. I mean, you know, San Francisco, they have a completely different contract than the rest of the state. Just for San Francisco County, they have a completely different contract. If you don't have access to it, then, you know, the buyer, the agents know over there won't work with you because they know that you don't know what you're doing. And it, it's just so true. Get in your niche, stay in your lane, crush hard, you know, and just stay good to your clients. Yeah. Um, Practice the process, like study as much as you can. If you have downtime, always try to be improving your skills, role playing, scripting, getting a real estate coach or a podcast that you listen to and actually practice the information that you learn. So like I took like a bunch of notes today. I'm going to go back and put it on my calendar. I block everything off on my calendar so, and, and, and block a lot of time. Things take longer than you think. Yeah. Block a lot of time off. So I'm going to research more of the YouTube agents uh, going through and, and, and just like really block off like an hour and a half of my day just to focus on that. And then I'll do the next one and next one. So powerful because it, again, it comes back to what you were saying in the very beginning, you, what you're going to do, you got some information. Now you're going to build a system. Then you're going to systematize that. And now you're going to be able to, to roll this out to your, to your 18 agents and, and as they grow and help them become more successful based upon you being a student of the industry, always mm -hmm. be willing to learn. Like Mark, we're talking about this, like you don't need to take notes on our conversation, but since you're a top producer and every top producer does this, they always will be in the front row at a conference. They will always be taking notes during a conversation because you take one thing away, you can put into your business, can make you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars over the time. So that's why I uh, test my agents after meetings. I give them pop quizzes with printed tests. Seriously? I'm like, do you pay attention? Yes. Because if they can recite that stuff, information is your money. Dude, if you got knowledge, you got money. And it's so if true. I'm talking about something at a meeting, you got to have a pop quiz at the end. Dude, I'm never sitting in one of your fucking meetings. Holy Christ. <laughs> God. I'm like, what? You're, used to, you're used to failing. Don't worry. No shit. <laughs> but yeah, oh, it's word. important. I think it's important to know so that when you meet those clients, you can just be on it and know what the latest, you know, veterans credit score had to go up, et cetera. But having that down is so important. So, yeah, because now, now with this kind of stuff, you can go ahead and create a video about it and push it out to your database or just put it on your own, your own YouTube channel or your own playlist in your YouTube channel. And like I said, just reflect like you're doing already, just referring people to the links. Go watch this. Go watch that. And, you know, I, um, I signed up for a thing called Mentor Box. Are you familiar yeah. with Mentor Box? $7 yeah, I have too many books to read already. <laughs> oh, seven dollars a month and i'm able to get through a shit ton of books i have a thing up there that says read 50 books this year yeah, I, that's I'm, awesome. I'm a little behind but i can get there um dude this has been a legitly awesome conversation I'm, i could definitely talk to you more i definitely want to have you back on the show so guys um if you like mark if you like well of course you fucking like mark if you don't like mark fuck off but you <laughs> i know, won't I, accept your offer you won't no. oh don't worry i don't have any listings anyways no i have a couple <laughs> <laughs> I won't take your offer, but uh, you don't accept <laughs> offers. I know. Okay. Uh, but guys, go to iTunes. Give us a five-star uh, review. It really helps us. And please do a notation of Mark. And you know, if you liked him, reach out to him. And Mark, where can, how do people reach out to you? Where can people reach out to you to, one, talk to you about EXP, talk to you about uh, joining your team, or shit, man, maybe just talk to you about buying or selling uh, in the different areas that uh, you, they may have a referral for you? Yeah, so we're Southern California, anything from LA South, and my Instagram name is going to be the easiest to find me. It's Mark Sells San Diego. <laughs> that is easy so, to find. Yeah, find me and uh, DM me on there because I feel like freaking Facebook, you're always at those 5,000 friends because of all the real estate agents, so you can't ever <sighs> add people. It's annoying. It is annoying. You, yeah. I don't have 5,000 friends. I mean, I do on Facebook. I have like three real friends and then I have like <laughs> all these real estate agents, which is great because I love, I love them all. But really, I have so many friends on there. So Instagram is so much easier to, to message back and forth. 
So, you know, next time we come on, we're going to talk about Facebook, Instagram. We're going to talk about kind of a lot of the uh, other fun stuff for you. Um, so you guys follow, you know, Mark Sells San Diego, right? Yep. Okay. Mark Sells San Diego. Reach out to him there, guys. Um, and you guys, as always, uh, send me a DM on Facebook or Instagram. It's uh, Greg McDaniel on Facebook, obviously. Uh, and then it's Greg McDaniel, R-E-U, on Instagram. So you can find me there. Um, or shoot me a text message, 925-915-1978, if I can do anything to help you. Uh, so, Mark, we play this little game. Um, we, and since Matt's not here, I'm going to ask you, uh, you have to pick a color for the bow that we're going to put on this pa- on the on this show. So what color would you like to make the bow for this show? Blue. Blue. We like blue bows. Big blue bows. Yes. Um I could go a very funny way with that, but blue bows. Um because <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Uh, yeah. There it is, guys. There's our show. Mark's awesome. He's an OG. Um, here's the blue bow on this show. Guys, go out there, share this, like this, give this to a friend or family member. Remember, uh, it's COVID-19. Practice your social distancing, but do not practice, you know, being socially, you know, completely, you know, gone. You need to still be around folks. And so we appreciate you hanging out. I love you guys for spending your time with me. And as always, guys, peace out, ninjas. We gone. <laughs>